Hey guys, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at the care plan for heart valve disorders. So in this lesson, we'll briefly take a look at the pathophysiology and the etiology of heart valve disorders. We're also going to look at additional things like subjective and objective data that your patient may present with, as well as nursing interventions and rationales. Okay, so heart valve disorders occur when blood flow direction is compromised through the valves, which then causes cardiac output to be compromised. Heart valve disorders include mitral regurgitation, mitral stenosis, aortic regurgitation, and aortic stenosis. Please see the next slide for a description of these issues. So the most common causes of heart valve disorders are rheumatic fever or endocarditis, which cause damage, vegetations, or even thickening and scarring of the heart valves. An acute emergency situation could be caused by mitral valve prolapse or papillary muscle rupture. So the desired outcome in these patients is to preserve cardiac output when possible and proceed to valve repair or replacement and also prevent any complications. So mitral regurgitation occurs when the mitral valve cannot close completely and blood then flows into the left atrium. Mitral stenosis is when the mitral valve cannot open fully or is narrowed and blood cannot get into the left ventricle. Aortic regurgitation is when the aortic valve cannot close completely and therefore blood backflows into the left ventricle. And finally, aortic stenosis is when the aortic valve cannot open fully or is narrowed and blood can't get out of that left ventricle. All right, guys, let's take a look at some of the subjective and objective data that your patient with heart valve disorders may present with. Now, remember, subjective data, these are going to be things that are based on your patient's opinions or feelings, but your patient with a heart valve issue may actually be asymptomatic with the exception of a heart murmur. However, if cardiac output is compromised, they may explain symptoms of chest pain, shortness of breath, weakness, fatigue, things like that. Objective data includes a systolic murmur, which is indicative of aortic stenosis or mitral regurge. And a diastolic murmur is actually indicative of aortic regurge or mitral stenosis. If cardiac output is compromised, we may see a decreased blood pressure, increased heart rate, weak pulses, slow capillary refill, and cool diaphoretic pale even dusky skin. Okay, guys, let's begin to review the nursing interventions for heart valve disorders. Assessing heart sounds is critical in these patients and is the easiest way for a nurse to a identify a valve disorder. A murmur indicates turbulent blood flow or abnormal blood flow through the valve. Remember, if a valve should be open but doesn't open fully, this is stenosis. And if a valve should be closed, this will be regurgitation. To help with identifying the presence of a murmur, identify is it an S1 or S2 murmur, realize which valve you are actually listening to and what should the valve be doing at this time. We also must assess and monitor the cardiovascular status of these patients as valve disorders can compromise cardiac output. By assessing their cardiovascular status, we can help to determine if there is decreased perfusion to the tissues. Be sure to assess closely their blood pressure, their heart rate, pulses, capillary refill, 
their skin color and temperature as the skin will be cool, pale, and clammy with a decreased cardiac output and also the presence of any arrhythmias. So assessing respiratory status is also important because think about it. If blood is not moving forward or backing up, this can create pulmonary congestion and lead to pulmonary edema. We would see a decreased SATs, crackles in their lungs, and the patient can even have pink frothy sputum. We also want to make sure we notify the provider of any new or sudden onset of murmurs, especially if accompanied with signs of poor perfusion or pulmonary edema, as a papillary muscle rupture and mitral valve prolapse can occur suddenly. So these issues are often accompanied with chest pain, shortness of breath, and other signs of heart failure. Guys, this is an emergency that requires surgical intervention immediately. So if your patient did require a surgical intervention like a valve replacement, it is necessary to educate them about the post-operative requirements. First of all, these patients will require lifelong anticoagulant therapy, which means they must be educated on precautions like using electric razors and soft uh, bristle toothbrushes and how often they require monitoring. Patients with artificial heart valves are at a super high risk of endocarditis, so they need to be educated on how to prevent this issue, like like receiving prophylactic antibiotics if a procedure is necessary, and also maintaining good oral hygiene. That is super important. So you guys really need to stress that as silly as it may sound. There is a ton of research on how bacteria moves from the oral cavity and becomes lodged in the valve. So with this, they should not undergo any dental procedures up to six months after valve surgery. Okay, guys, here is a look at a completed care plan for heart valve disorders. Okay, let's do a quick review. With heart valve disorders, blood flow direction is compromised through the valves, which means cardiac output is compromised. Heart valve disorders include mitral regurgitation, mitral stenosis, aortic regurgitation, and aortic stenosis. The patient may be asymptomatic or just have a murmur. Subjective data, if cardiac output is compromised, may include chest pain, shortness of breath, weakness, fatigue, and objective data may include decreased blood pressure, increased heart rate, weak pulses, slow capillary refill, and pale and cool, clammy skin. Assess heart sounds for murmurs, respiratory status for signs of pulmonary edema, and cardiovascular status to assess for decreased perfusion. Notify the provider of new onset murmurs, as this could indicate an issue like a papillary muscle rupture, and guys, this requires a surgical intervention. Educate valve replacement patients on the lifelong anticoagulant therapy need and the prevention of endocarditis. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.